So thank you all for joining us today for our public service professional lunch series event. Um, my name is Samantha and I'm an intern at the Office of Career Development here at Macaulay. Huge thank you to Deval Riley for joining us today. He is a senior diversity recruiter at Peace Corps and he'll be telling you all about his career trajectory and professional experiences. Um, during the event, uh, just keep yourself muted until the Q&A section um, at the very end. Um, and if you have any questions, you can also leave them in the chat. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the questions now. So Duval, can you please first introduce yourself and give us a brief overview of your career trajectory so far? Sure. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, so as, a, as mentioned, my name is Duval Riley. I'm a Peace Corps recruiter. Um, I have been with Peace Corps going on my sixth year as a recruiter. Um, previously, I was a volunteer. I served in Ukraine as a youth development specialist, um, where I was able to work with students um, at a vocational school um, who were basically there to find experience in other trades while they were attending high school. So for me, that meant, you know, I didn't really have any specific, like specific specialized skills in that, in that realm, but I was able to work with them on um, uh, areas within my background which I had a major in photography and journalism from Southern Illinois University. Um, and I was able to work with them on creating a student run newspaper. Um, so I helped them with um, journalism, writing, reporting, photography. We had a monthly published uh, newspaper um, where I was also working with radio and television type of programs and uh, English, of course, teaching English after school. Uh, working with professors on lesson plan development and um, teaching, as well as collaboration with other peaceful volunteers that was in my, my uh, site in my country in Ukraine. Um, so there was a lot of different opportunities within uh, Peace Corps that I was able to get in touch with. Um, and as a recruiter now, I am able to continue that, you know, that advertisement of Peace Corps and the sharing opportunities with students and community members that find interest in uh, working abroad, working in fields that are more of a grassroots approach and trying to explore their career field as well as helping others in building sustainability and building that capacity within a community. Um, and so that's a little bit about my professional experience with Peace Corps, which of course is a government agency. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer more questions about, you know, my experience with, that got me to Peace Corps, where I think I'm going to end up after Peace Corps. Um, this is, I will note, Peace Corps is a term position. So that means that you have a certain amount of time that you know you're going to be within the agency. Um, and then after that point, you have to kind of transition out of the agency to another field, another department, um, whether it's private sector or government. Um, but yeah, I'm actually going into my last year of Peace Corps at this moment. Thank you. Um, actually, I was interested in um, your undergraduate experience at Southern, in Southern Illinois University, what activities you were involved in and what you learned from them and how that has impacted your career since then. Yeah. Uh, so that actually goes back to um, where I went to, where I grew up. So I was born and raised in Minnesota. Um, I am the first in my uh, family to graduate uh, from college. And, um, you know, I had always known that I was going to go to college and get a degree, but I, it was never something that was like really, uh, I guess, and I was not that well informed of what to do, how to approach, you know, certain universities and going to college and applying for all that. Um, I am the oldest in my family, so I was the experimental child, I guess, as far as like understanding what FAFSA was and what, um, you know, ACTs and SATs. How do I study and prepare for those? Um, but it was kind of late at uh, that stage of me finding and touring those universities I was considering. And ideally, I wanted to go out of state to uh, actually to California um, to a photography school. I had always had a big interest in photography and, um, and exploring the world through 
you know, my camera. Um, Southern Illinois was a university that was accessible. It was far enough from home, but still close enough to be at home in, in an emergency. Um, it had that, you know, that ideal uh, campus uh, environment as far as like what you would see on like, you know, those teen movies, um, something that I was really interested in at that time. And then also had, um, you know, a natural setting. So it was in a, a, a forest setting. Um, so I had that as well. And then the programs itself, photography, had a great photography program. And I also had um, something that I wasn't really expecting, but um, a journalistic program too. So going into school, I, I was meeting other students that had worked for the student newspaper and they were uh, reporters and journalists and uh, photographers um, and I had only considered photography as an art form I didn't really consider it as a, a way of documenting stories and telling stories through photos and so that kind of got me into that aspect of uh, uh, photojournalism and then I ended up working for the student newspaper as well and that kind of transitioned into my my degree being more focused on journalism, so combining photography and journalism together. Um, I was, I wouldn't say I was extremely involved on campus. However, the job that I had as a photographer led me to experience campus in a different way and really be involved in a new way of really understanding the underlying uh, issues on campus and um, exposing, um, just being able to meet, you know, stakeholders and leaders and on campus and understanding the stories that the students were interested in and in, uh, in sharing. Also, I was an RA, so I was able to facilitate programs within a small community um, of campus life. So that really made an influence on my, uh, my undergrad um, within Southern Illinois University. Um, and we're also interested in your day-to-day -day as a senior diversity recruiter. So can you walk us through what a typical day looks like for you at your job? Sure. Yeah, these days look a little different, but um, there are a lot of, uh, as a government agency, there's a lot of bureaucracy um, within uh, this, this agency of Peace Corps as well. So there's a lot of meetings. There's a lot of um, planning and, um, and new developments happening within you know, the countries that we work in, and then relaying that information to recruiters who relay the information to those that are interested in applying for this school. Um, so there's a lot of development and relationship um, um, going on within Peace Corps from those that have never heard of Peace Corps um, to those that have served and they're now returning and working in, in um, areas that we um, want to share their stories with. So it's a full circle thing. And for me, um, a lot of it is uh, starting with building relationships with our partners. So, you know, we work with career services quite frequently on, you know, understanding the need and the, uh, the, the ways that we engage with students, whether it's career fairs or sessions like these or, uh, um, you know, office hours and meeting one-on-one -on -one and doing resume. So those are one way of, uh, of planning those events and finding ways to stay in, in, in touch and engage with students, understanding what they're interested in, finding um, opportunities for you know, during school, after school, and then what their career trajectory is gonna be like. Um, so we try to help understand where you wanna see yourself and how can we basically give you opportunities to make you prepared for that. And uh, Peace Corps definitely has a lot of transferable skills, whether it's, you know, an opportunity that you, you graduate in, like for instance, in, a, in an English major and you want to teach English. That's something very, very uh, direct that we can uh, place you in the field. Or if it's just something that you want to gain additional, you know, skills in grant writing or teaching and leadership, um, that's another way of uh, using Peace Corps as a, as a tool to kind of gain uh, experience in the field as well as international on an international scope that's extremely uh, valuable in uh, pretty much any profession I would say. 
Yeah, that's actually directly related to my next question, which was going to be what are some transferable skills and attributes that you gained mm -hmm. that you feel will be applicable to other careers and industries? And how has serving in the Peace Corps shaped your character and your mindset? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so going into Peace Corps, I did not know anything about Ukraine, honestly. Um, I knew for me that I wanted to serve. I wanted to be a global citizen. I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to add value to the work that I was doing. And I felt that Peace Corps would allow me to do that um, through service. Um, and it honestly, it was a career path that I never would have considered. I never saw that as a major <laughs> um, public service. Um, and so it was a completely new avenue for me. Um, to kind of explore that path. And um, as I go, you know, start my application and I, and I get to Ukraine and I start my training, I'm learning about the culture, I'm learning about the history and I'm taking it in a different way than I, I did as a student in high school or in college. This was more direct, this was more in front of me and I was more in tune to that. Um, Peace Corps has a way of immersing uh, into a culture that is very uh, fluid and very, uh, it's like a partnership. Um, so you have the Ukrainian um, citizens facilitating trainings, teaching you the language. I was in uh, training for three months and I had a solid foundation of the Russian language. Uh, so now I have another transferable skill knowing the language that I had no knowledge of before. And that was just a starting point too. So as I continued with that uh, service, I was able to continue, you know, enhancing my skills in, in the culture and um, really changing my mind. It was a paradigm shift for me, thinking that I was going to this country, helping these, the people that uh, applied for a volunteer. And in fact, I didn't know anything about the culture. So I was learning and I needed help from them. So it's a lot of times you think you're helping this country, but honestly, they're helping you and they're broadening your perspective of life and, and um, history and, and just in so many ways. So for me, Peace Corps Service was really about building relationships and understanding community and knowing, understanding what the need is and listening. Um, and so through that partnership, I was able to really just develop um, and fine tune my skills and what I want, how I want to be impactful in the career path that I have and also personally how I want to live my life in a more meaningful, more um, communal and um, relationship aspect type of way. Yeah, definitely. And that is, um, my next question is actually related to that in the sense that like, what do you think is the most fulfilling part about what you do and what keeps you excited about the work that you're doing? So the most exciting part of my work is just touch, touching base with students and just engaging with them and knowing and seeing the excitement they have um, and aspirations that they have for change in a positive way and um, just being a leader in the community. Um, and I think that the world has so much to offer and as far as another way of learning and combining the two with the students um, that have that drive and motivation to change the world, as well as being a global citizen um, and public servant. I think that's a great combination. And I think Peace Corps really teaches you that as well. And it, it combines those two aspects of uh, that motivation, that flexibility to be out there in the field. And then the students, their motivation to make the difference, make the change. and influence their, um, their perspective of how they want to see their future, um, how they want to develop their career path, and and then end to end, basically, make the world a better place. And adding on to that, like, if students were interested in serving in the Peace Corps, like, what should their next steps be? So I think, um, first of all, just take a look at our website. Um, take a look and see what, what opportunities are interesting to you. We have six areas of focus within our sector. So you choose the best one that fits your experience or an, uh, 
or choose a country that you feel like you want to um, work in. Um, and then connecting with me as a recruiter, I'm able to help guide you through the application. I'm able to work with your resume and see how we can make you the most competitive candidate and give you some advice of what you can do right now as an undergrad to gain those skills to be a competitive candidate. Um, there's so much you can do right now um, despite, you know, your busy schedule and, and, and studying. And, um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can add your experience through volunteering, through internship, through the coursework that you're taking, languages. Um, those are all great ways to get, kind of show that you have the skills, you know, as an undergrad. And then once you have your degree, that's a, a huge um, thing to have as, as a uh, qualified candidate for a piece of work. We either look at the four-year degree or five years of experience. And related to that, um, what is one skill attribute or strategy that has helped you most throughout your career and has led you to where you are today? I think flexibility and adaptability have been a huge plus for me. Um, like I said, um, I was born and raised in Minnesota. I, I left the uh, my hometown to see something different and, and be challenged by going to school out of state. Um, then came Peace Corps, which was a huge shift in culture and environment. Um, but just having that openness and, um, and just being willing to learn from challenging situations has really helped me kind of have the mindset that if I could do this, I can really I don't have to be afraid of anything. I can do anything. And um, it's almost like that saying is, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Like if you can make it through Peace Corps, you can make it anywhere. You can go anywhere, honestly, and you can do anything. And um, I was actually wondering as well, like um, about an achievement that you're most proud of so far in your career um, that you would like to share as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, the fact that I, you know, I am the first one, as I mentioned, I am the first in my family to graduate. I think those are big achievements, but I think just honestly, I think the Peace Corps has been one of the best things in my life. Um, it has really given me the confidence and the, uh, that drive and that, that mission driven um, uh, feeling to, to do good and to be a, a motivating change maker in this uh, in this world, um, I it has opened up a lot of experiences for me. Um, just the fact that I have this interest in, in intrigue and, um, and people and cultures and uh, and the natural world, I think, has really helped me kind of focus and fine tune my path in my career. And then also just with my life, my lifestyle and um, the community that I have around me. I think those are all. Um, things that I really value and I feel like I'm really proud of um, being able to cultivate that, those experiences. And related to that, how do you have any tips for cultivating a network, a good network of community around you? And can you tell us about maybe a mentor or someone who has played a really significant role in your career so far? Yeah, so funny thing is like, I never really felt like I had a mentor. I um, always looked at my peers to kind of see what action they kind of did and and learn from that um, and and really just um, kind of have a, 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 like a figure in my in my group to kind of help course my path in a way um, so some tips that I have as far as like uh, building that community is really just community mapping really just when you're moving into a new, in a new job or a new city, really just be curious about your community and really open yourself up to learning um, what resources are out there, who are, who's in your community, like what, what identities do you have that you could kind of find relation to and how do they intersect. Um, and just being curious, I think, is a, is a huge thing. I mean, it opens up a lot of doors and uh, common interests with uh, those that you may have never considered you know, connecting with. Um, so that, I think, is a, is a big part of 
what helps me when I'm in a new situation, when I'm in a new environment, is just to really ask questions and be open and be inviting. I think. And do you have any advice for current Macaulay students who are interested in pursuing public service and the international affairs industry? Um, I think that within this city, the community system, I think there's so much talent. And I think one of the best things about the community system is that you are the most diverse community, I think, in the United States. And you have diverse perspectives and you have unique ways of facing challenges and, bar and conquering those barriers. And I think that your experience and your perspective of life, your lived experiences, can really influence um, in a positive way how the world is reacting and changing. Uh, and I think as a public servant, you can really uh, make a lot of difference in, in you know, laws and, and regulations and um, social justice and environmental justice as well. Um, because you're living through your lived experiences, you have that, that knowledge there and that perspective. Um, and I think that can go a long way as far as feeling that, um, just having that, uh, that perception and connectedness to the issues at hand right now. And related to that, um, if students were, you know, CUNY, CUNY students were to serve abroad through the Peace Corps, what are the different countries that the Peace Corps serves and what are the different types of work that students can expect to complete and apply their uh, perspective to? Yeah, so at this moment, we are currently paused on our uh, programs, but we are looking to re-enter early next year. Um, and there will be a limited amount of opportunities at this time, but once the country and the world starts opening up a bit more, we're going to have and we're going to need volunteers to serve. So we have, um, before COVID happened, we had over 60 countries around the world that we could work in. We had over 7,000 volunteers in the field. And um, we have six sectors that we focus on. And those sectors include environmental programs, agriculture, education, health, community economic development, and youth development programs. So you choose basically based off your interest in the sector or the country. Um, and you basically can apply very specifically to those programs or you can leave it open to what your what the, the highest need is and at this moment um, from what we recognize the highest need is it's going to be in the region of africa and then also the highest program need is going to be in education and within those um, that educational sec uh, sector we have the top is going to be teaching english and it's going to be more formal education like in the classroom um, we also have a need for STEM backgrounds too, so math and science teachers. Uh, we have um, positions that are located in uh, the K through 12, and even college level, and as well as trained teachers. So there's a lot of different um, opportunities within each sector, even though it's a pretty vague description, there's a lot of opportunities you can have within each program. And it's not your only type of program that you can uh, participate in. You can create programs as you see need, and as you communicate with your community, as far as what is needed in that, in that, in that sector. Um, and you mentioned that all volunteers serve for a certain time period. So um, I'm wondering what your plans are after the Peace Corps and what you plan to do um, in your career afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, I am exploring that at this moment, um, working on updating my you know, application and my resume. Um, so very much like what seniors are doing at this moment. Um, but I am really um, strongly interested in continuing working with um, the federal government. Um, it can be a very difficult uh, way to get your foot in within the government sector. Um, but once you're in, it's very, uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of move around in different, um, different agencies and different departments. So at this moment, I'm looking mostly for um, opportunities within uh, different agencies like the State Department or, or um, even uh, working as an immigration services and uh, a 
asylum seeking um, opportunities, um, and even you know uh, environmental uh, positions as well. And I'm actually interested in seeing if there are any questions, Anne and Harleen. I did go through all of the ones that I've prepared so far. Um, do you guys have any questions that you would like to ask Duval? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll start. So uh, I know you mentioned that you've studied abroad and you were in, like, I don't remember if you specifically said a variety of countries or maybe just one, but I was hoping you can kind of give us a bit more information about like what you learned from that country and more about like maybe the cultural background and how that's impacted you until today. Yeah. So, uh, so I was living in, uh, working in Ukraine with Peace Corps. Um, so that was for two years. I lived in Crimea, um, which is like the Southern Peninsula. And you might have, you know, it's been in the news quite a bit over the last few years because it was annexed by Russia. Um, so Peace Corps is no longer in that area, unfortunately. Um, but I didn't even know anything about Crimea. Um, I barely knew anything about Ukraine. Um, but when I was going through training, my, my language facilitator was Crimean Tatar, which is an ethnic minority in Crimea. And they have a rich history. Um, and she would share you know, stories about Crimea and a little bit about the language. And, um, I just was fascinated. I, didn't have, I had no idea um, that Ukraine had any type of ethnic minorities. And, um, you know, from my knowledge, Crimea, or Ukraine is a very homogenous country. Um, so I was kind of prepared to kind of face some stereotypical behavior when it came to, you know, my appearance and, and, and dealing with that. Um, but understanding that Crimean Tatar have a, have a little bit more color to them, um, I was getting excited to learn a little bit more about that, um, that country or the culture. Um, and even the cuisine was a little different. Um, so being in Crimea, I was able to get exposed to learning a little bit about the history. And um, one thing about living in Ukraine in a post-Soviet society is that you learn a lot about World War II. Um, Ukraine was one of the biggest hit countries when it came to the loss of lives in, in World War II. Um, so that's something that we really bring it over in, in high school history classes. And so, uh, you know, numbers and dates just don't really make a lot of sense in my head at times. So when I was actually being able to live there and hear the stories and see the people that were affected and learn about the, the land that was affected by it, before, it really resonated with me and it really um, made me want to learn more and, and just be more engaged. Um, and so that's something that I really took away um, during my time in Peace Corps to understand that you know, the communities that were underrepresented, um, especially the Roma in Ukraine, uh, which is a, more of a nomadic um, community of, of people that come originate from Romania. Um, and also just like the, the history of the world, you know, it is a, it is a part of, Ukraine is a very young country. It was at that time only 20 years old. And so they were still, I think, like learning to identify themselves as an independent country. Um, but yet they had a really rough history um, that was just, you know, remnants of the history could be seen all over the country. So that was something that was really a big takeaway for me. Um, and I was wondering, like, when you serve in these countries, do you get to live directly within the community and truly immerse yourself in that? Or do you live, like, separately and serve separately? Yeah, so in the, in the beginning of the, you know, as you immer immerse yourself into the, the country and train, you're living with a host family. So you, you're basically fully immersed, full immersion there. You have uh, country, uh, families that may not even speak any English at all, um, but you just try to learn to communicate through sign language, like hand gestures and a little bit of Russian or whatever kind of language you have um, as you slowly learn to like speak and, and, and say like, um, phrases. And, um, and so that's for the first three months. The, the remainder of the time, once you get to your site, 
you may be living with a host family, um, depending on the resources available, or you may be living um, in your own housing, but you are still within the community. You are living and working in the community. Um, so you're basically living like a daily life, but you're just in the middle of a community that you uh, are, uh, that has adopted you, basically. Are there any more additional questions, Harleen? I do have um, a link that I want to share with you. If you want to stay connected with me, um, if you just click on that link and enter your information, we can continue a, a line of communication as well. So that link is in the chat. Okay. I was actually curious more about the rules that you um, that you can participate in when you go abroad. So you mentioned there was um, an education aspect, there was a community health aspect, or a community action aspect and a health aspect. Um, are there any certain skills that you would have to really apply, really, I guess, sort of qualify for to get into these sectors? Or is it something that you can really, this is a program that you can really gain all these skills on site? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so you really wanna make sure that you are tailoring your experience to the positions that you are interested in. Not to say that you have to be, for instance, you don't have to be a, a teacher. You don't have to have a teaching degree to be an English teacher. Um, you look at your experience um, through volunteering, through um, just hobbies even. Um, so like if you're a local leader in certain activities or clubs, that's something that you're gonna uh, inform us on. But if you have, like, think about your, your tutoring, if you help the tutoring, if you help babysit, you know, those are all ways of using that experience to kind of um, filter into uh, your, your uh, qualifications, you know, that is something that you are teaching, you are, um, are you a public speaker, have you facilitated lessons, have you developed plans, um, those are ways that you can kind of, you know, add to your competitiveness in, looking at specific positions that you might feel like you're not as qualified for. And that's another thing that I can come into play as far as like my, my ability to help you tailor that resume. Um, I can help talk these things out through, you, uh, through your experience that you've shared with me. Um, there are, not to say there are some, some positions that do ask for a specific type of degree or a specific type of experience and that's why I would suggest that you look at the positions now to see what they look like. Um, so you can prepare yourself um, if there's any options that you have uh, to uh, gain that skill. Um, and do you have any anecdotes from students or past volunteers who have served and what they said about their experience? Um, I do get updates from time to time, um, you know, they, um, I really try to make sure that, you know, everyone's experience is unique. So what I share about my experience is not necessarily what your experience is gonna be like. So I just say, this is what it can be like. Um, but I love hearing about stories about um, the way that uh, uh, volunteers connect with their host families and then they're, they're picking up on language lessons, um, learning to, um, you know, stories that may, that may be um, asked like directions um, as a foreigner and then being able to respond back um, in the language. Those are always fun stories to have. Um, also just the connecting families with, uh, with each other. So host families love to hear, um, you know, how you grew up, what your family is like, whether or not you have a, a partner or, um, you know, what your house looks like. So um, having, you know, stories of pictures or, um, you know, fun little knickknacks that you can share with your family or, you know, even connect them through, through uh, you know, social media or video chat is always a fun thing for them to do. Um, so those are fun stories to have. Um, but yeah, um, there's a lot of different things and you can hear a lot more just by going to different events. Um, we have a lot of different stories that you can uh, come across as far as um, not so, um, <laughs> there's always those funny stories of, uh, the food and then, um, you know, the, uh, situations that aren't necessarily the ones that you want to share <laughs> out loud. 
um, but they they make good stories anyway. So sometimes you'll you have to come to a, a, a happy hour or social event with uh, RPCVs to really get those those fun stories. Mm -hmm. And um, adding on to that, are there any upcoming Peace Corps events that students should watch out for and RSVP to? Yeah, um, we have um, a list of events on our website um, that you can kind of filter through if you just go to peacecorps.gov um, events. You can find a full list of, uh, you know, depending on the sector you're interested in, the country. Um, I was just mentioning there's the uh, uh, Peace Corps Cooks type of uh, um, event happening this week. Um, so that's something that, um, but I can connect with you after to give you a little bit more information on that. Too. That sounds good. Um, do you or Jamie, do you have anything uh, to add or to ask? <laughs> No. No. I, thank you. Oh, um, go ahead, Jamie. I'm a rock star. Um, thank you for uh, answering all our questions. And thank you for overcoming Zoom fatigue because I know I have that hard. Um, I've tested positive for Zoom fatigue. That is for sure. <laughs> um, but again, thank you so much. And if you have any other um, links or things you want to share with us so we can push out to our community, please feel free to send that over. Yeah, I did um, in the chat box the full list of events that we have. It's too many to mention, but definitely filter through some of those and see uh, what comes to mind for you guys. Cool. Right. Yeah, any last words? I sound so dramatic. <laughs> no? I think her audio might have. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you so much, Duval. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you, Sam, for being the fabulous moderator that you always are. Thank you. Thank you. Students thank you. Um, and I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Duval. Great opportunity. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care. Thank bye. you.